Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today you're going to see the puzzle I got so excited about in yesterday's video. Um, it's the castle wall puzzle you can see uh, on screen. This was compiled by somebody under the name Vanilla Ice and I don't know who Vanilla Ice is. Actually if, you, if Vanilla Ice happens to watch the video then do write in and tell us uh, and I will certainly sing your praises from the rooftops my friend because you created a work of sublime genius. Um, today's video is a bit different to, to our normal videos. I'm not live solving today. I've solved both of the puzzles that I'm going to present for, um, but they're no less interesting for that. The, these two puzzles are so good. They are such high quality. Um, we're really very lucky on this channel to be able to show you things like this. Um, and I can't, you know, I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to share this with you today. Now, the reason that I started to look at castle wall puzzles more seriously in the last few weeks was, of course, Ken Endo's incredible puzzle that appeared in the Japanese Heads Up Puzzle Championship. Now, this is the puzzle on the screen now. And this puzzle, in my opinion, is about as close to a perfect competition puzzle as you could ever find. Not only is it brutally hard, but it is also sublimely logical. It has the most elegant um, logical deductions that are necessary to solve it. And what that acted to do in the Japanese Heads Up Puzzle Championship is it made it a superb differentiator. Because one of the issues that the very, you know, you face at the very top of the puzzling world is that the computational speed of some of the top players is phenomenal. It is off the scale fast. And what that tends to mean is if they get a chance to bifurcate, they will, because they're so quick that they can solve two easy puzzles much, much more quickly than they could, say, find the logical, difficult next step in order to force a completely logical path. So ideally what you want to do is to come up with some something that stops them doing that. And that's exactly what Ken Endo managed to do here. Now, Ken in his own right is undoubtedly one of the one of the best puzzle solvers in the world, if not the best. Um, you know, he's a multiple world puzzle champion. And, you know, what he's achieved in this puzzle, I'm sure, is a testament to his sort of thinking about how puzzles should work. It, it is it is just brilliant. But we need to give an enormous amount of credit to Takuma Kitamura for proving that this puzzle was perfect by actually solving it in the tournament. Um, so you know, he solved this puzzle in a shade over six minutes. And I'm going to talk you through the logic in terms of how to solve this puzzle in a moment. And you will not believe that anybody could solve this puzzle in six minutes. It is a feat of staggering, staggering genius. Um, you know, and to give you an idea of how good the solve was, it wasn't like the other Japanese competitors were right hot on his heels. Most of them hadn't even got a clear pencil mark in the grid after 10 minutes. Um, so to actually solve it, amazing. Takuma, absolutely amazing. And we're very lucky on the channel today because Takuma has shared his thought processes with, with us. So we have video footage of him solving the puzzle and I've annotated that video footage with his thought processes. And at the end of this video, do, do hang around and you can watch all of that yourselves. Um, you know, and I know for some of you that may not be interesting, but we have a lot of um, a lot of people watching the channel who are interested in speed solving in particular, and I think that certainly for them is going to be a bit of a treat this weekend. Um, now, what else do I want to mention? I want to mention Mark's video today as well. We, we're keeping up our schedule of two videos a day during self-isolation. And Mark's done something very unusual. We've covered a listener crossword for you uh, later, but not uh, a sort of words crossword, a mathematical listener crossword. So four times a year, the listener crossword, which is widely regarded as the hardest crossword in, in, in the world, um, that, that uh, four times a year it produces a mathematical version of itself. And this puzzle in particular has the most, I mean, most incredible denouement. I mean, the, the mathematics involved in it, I, I did spend some time after I saw the puzzle trying to understand the maths behind the, the result and not really getting anywhere. So definitely, I'm sure there are some very good mathematicians watching, watching the channel. I'll be very interested to hear your thoughts on, on Mark's, Mark's video later on. 
Um, but we must carry on. Let's get going. Um, if you want to have a go at these puzzles, I definitely recommend it. I should, I suppose, firstly remind you of the rules of castle wall, castle wall puzzles. Let's use this puzzle to, to talk about the rules. Um, so they're fairly simple. What we need to do is to put a loop into the grid. That's just one loop, not, not multiple loops, such that the white cells have got to be inside the loop. The black cells have got to be outside the loop. And these clues, you can see there's lots of numbers with arrows in the grid. Well, they're quite straightforward. What this means, what this three means, and the arrow pointing in this direction, is, is that the loop must cross exactly three cell boundaries in this direction. So you could see it could go one, two, three. That would be crossing this boundary, this boundary, and this boundary. And if it did that, it could then cross no more boundaries in this direction. So um, that's how that's how the clues work. That's all there is to it. Um, if you want to play the puzzles, and I definitely recommend it. Maybe I, I'd recommend starting with this one actually, rather than Ken's, because Ken's has such a difficult opening step that you may just stare at it for a long time and and never get there. It, I mean, and there would be no embarrassment in that, given what happened in the Japanese Heads Up Championship. Um, but this, this from Vanilla Ice is is a gorgeous puzzle. So maybe start with this one and then move on to Ken's. Um, I'm going to do Ken's first, um, and let's talk through it now. Let's get cracking. Now I need to sh shout out as well to a couple of guys who put some very erudite comments on our earlier Castle Wall video. So Freddie Hand. Um, and also Kevin McKnight, some lovely ideas about how to how to you know explain how to solve this puzzle cleanly, um, and that's what I'm going to do now. No bifurcation here. So the first thing to note when you look at this puzzle is there is just a single white cell in the middle of the grid. That's got to be inside the loop, and there's nothing else. There's just black boundaries. So this this is a monster. I mean, if you were faced with this in a competition, you'd just Oh, you'd be like, my goodness. Um, but how do you go about solving it? Well, the trick, there is an initial trick here. Let's move to loop dynamics. That's, that's how you do that. You hit composite, then loop, and then I use line or X. The trick is to notice something interesting about these big clues. So we've got a six clue here, a five clue here, it's another six clue look, and another five clue. So if I draw all of these line segments in, you can see there are far too many now. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight on this row, eight on this row, eight on this column, eight on this column. That's 32 line segments. But we know that these two rows and two columns have to have 22 line segments altogether because we've got a six and a five and another six and a five. So we've got to somehow reduce the number of line segments I've just drawn by um, 10. So how are we going to do that? Well, there are some easy ways of doing that. The first thing to note is that if we look at these four cells where there are sort of some, there's a crossroads pattern appearing, obviously this could never be the case in an actual loop um, because the loop can't branch. It must be a single loop. So actually into each of these cells, you could you know, you could have a turn, oops, or you could have the loop going straight through, but you can't have more than two line segments coming in and out of these four squares. Now, at the moment, we've got four line segments coming in and out of these four squares. So actually, we can reduce our 32 total by two for each of these four squares. And that gets us down to 24. So we still have too many line segments in what we've drawn. And the trick, the next trick, is to notice this one clue here and this one clue here. Because what this means is that if we think about it, can this line segment and this line segment exist in the finished puzzle? And the answer is no, because once this line segment hits the top of the grid, it must turn and cross a boundary. We don't know which way it would turn, but it would have to turn. And in doing so, it would consume this clue. The one clue would be fulfilled. So if there were two lines coming up into the top row, both turning, there would axiomatically be at least two line segments in the top row, and there can only be one. Now, therefore, one of these line segments I've drawn that reaches the top row, either 
must be incorrect. It's either going to be that one with an X there, or it's going to be this one with an X here. Now that is fascinating because all of a sudden that reduces our 24 total by one more, gets us down to 23. And if we look at the same thing in column one, we've got the same pattern there, look. So only one of these can hit the boundary to fulfill this clue. And that gets us down to 22. So now we've identified how this 6-5 clues interact. There's going to be two line segments in each of the blue squares and one coming in to the top row and the top column of the or the left hand column of the grid and every other line segment must be correct so we actually uh, how, how am I going to draw this let's get rid of all these line segments and fill in the ones that we now know are forced uh, so that must be that must be that must be that must be that's uh, oops there's a couple more here more here, two there, and two there. And we get this sort of cross, get these four crosshairs pattern. Now that I think is very hard to see. It's certainly not obvious the moment you see this grid. Takuma saw that in two seconds. Seriously, two seconds. Um, so, but how would we go on from here? Let's say we even had the insight that Takuma had in two seconds and we got to this point. How, how would we how would we develop the soul from here? Well, the way I would do it is I would think about these one clues, first of all, because if we know that one of these is happening and turning, we know that that whatever, either this one or this one is consuming the one clue. So there's never going to be a boundary crossing here or here or here or here. And similarly, in the, in the column, we can X off some boundary crossings. And in a puzzle this difficult, we should certainly do that. So we probably reach this sort of position relatively smoothly. Now the next thing to note is this four clue in row two, because we know one of these boundaries, one of these lines here is extending one further. Let's say it was this one just for the sake of exposition. What is the effect of that on this four clue? How do we get four boundary crossings now in this row. You could see that one would be forced. This one would be give us a second one. This would give us a third one. And whichever way this turns, if it turns this way, this line segment is no longer crossable. And if it turns this way, that line segment is no longer crossable. So the key idea here is to note that this can only turn in one direction. And in doing so, it removes one of the possible line segments in the row. Now that means, coming back to here, these three line segments are in fact forced. And that is rather nice because that does actually give us a little bit more progress. We can put a line segment in there, look. This can't turn up, so that must turn down, a line segment in there. And now we have to be very diligent. We have to think about the two clue again. We've got one line segment here. We know one of these two is stopping. We don't know which one, but one of them is going to hit the boundary and not continue to, the, to this column of the grid. And therefore, that one will be the second line segment uh, in this column. So let's say it was this one that was stopping. It now has to turn either that way or that way. That'll give us our second piece. So this line segment here and this line segment here are not crossable. So we need to X those in. Um, similarly, in this column look. We've now got one line segment. This is hitting the boundary. That's going to give us a second. This is hitting the boundary. That's going to give us a third. So again, we can X off those. And the result of Xing off those is to isolate some squares that can never be reached in the solution by the loop. Okay, so we reached this position. Now, Let's have a think about this now. The, the next step in the solution here is, is utterly brilliant, but it's not easy. We have to think about this line segment here and whether or not that's possible. Now, if you don't know the trick, 
you'll look at this line segment and you might say, okay, well, it could join up there and then the loop might go here and here and then it could come around here. And you you'd sort of try and develop the loop in your mind or maybe by reference to the clues in, in order to try and work out what might be going on. But actually, the moment you draw this line segment in, if you think if you know the trick, you can immediately say this line segment is impossible. And this is quite a beautiful idea from Ken. It really is. Because if this line segment is in, it is no longer possible for there to be a loop in this grid that includes this, this central white square. Now, how beautiful is that idea? Now, you may, some of you will instantly see, see that as obvious and axiomatic. Some people find it very hard to visualize this. So I shall try and explain it as best I can. Let, let's imagine that this end of the loop and this end of the loop connected like this. It's now pretty easy to see that if, if these connect, however they connect, whether they go off on a journey and then connect back with each other, it's no, it's, there's no way you can now draw a loop in this grid that includes this white cell because this is the inside of the loop and I, I just can't bend it round quick enough to include this um, this white square. So the only way that these two, two uh, lines could somehow include this white square would be if this, the end of this line connected to the beginning of this line. You can see if there was sort of a that shape then you could loop round there and connect here but of course this isn't possible you can't do diagonal connections and what's more if we tried to do this and then join this uh, well let's if, if we tried to take this line segment and not join it diagonally but to actually come round the grid and join it to this line here you can see that however we would do that we're going to isolate this end of the loop so that's not going to be possible. So this line segment is not, it's just, it just won't work. And you can put an X in here. Now again, I think that is just a gorgeous piece of logic, a gorgeous piece of logic, not easy to see at all. And you'll see in Takuma Solve later, he puts in this line and I'd say it took him five seconds to rub it out because he appreciated that the, the effect that would have on the geometry of the puzzle. It's staggeringly brilliant, staggering. Um, now, even though, even when you get to this point, though, it's really hard to see how to make progress efficiently, logically. Um, perhaps the best thing to do now is to look at the big six clue and to ask what happens if the six clue doesn't reach the top of the grid. If this doesn't come up, what has to happen? You can see we've got three line segments now um, and we need three more. Well, if we're ruling out this one as a possibility, either this will have to connect directly downwards like that, that's one possibility, or this will have to connect directly downwards. One of those things must be true. But the problem is now we've created a sort of a bottleneck in the grid. I think that's exactly how Kevin described it in his comment because if we do do this, this loop is now isolated. There's no way we can get the loop out. You know, if this comes left, this has got nowhere to go now. If it goes right, it can't get out. It's, it's just going to form a box. It can't get out over the top here. So that doesn't work. And similarly, obviously, if we connect that down there, I can turn this left and it'll connect, but then the other loop segment won't get out. The other end can't get out, it's boxed in. So what that means is that you must extend to the top of the grid. Now, why does that matter? Well, the main reason it matters is it fulfills this one clue. I, this turn here or this turn here are gonna fulfill the one clue. So that means that this can't extend upwards these boundaries are not crossable because the, one of these will be crossed. And now we start to get into interesting territory in terms of the solution. Um, and what could we do here to make efficient progress? One thing we could look at perhaps is this one clue here because this is coming in 
it's hitting this loop segment and it's going to have to turn. So when it turns, that's going to consume this clue. So that can't be a crossing, this can't be a crossing, this can't be a crossing, and this can't be a crossing. So this must come into the blue square there. This must come through into the blue square there. And okay, what could we do then? Well, the next thing we might want to think about is how this how this is going to move. If this comes up and connects like that, we've now got a problem because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six ends of loop and no way of getting them out of the region they're in. If we, if we move one of them this way, we can't have an odd number of loop segments locked into a section. Otherwise, you know, we're going to have an end of a loop dangling. So we'd have to move both, both of them out and that will close this loop. Or we can make a bigger loop here, but that's also not going to be a big enough loop to include enough things. So this actually can't connect there. It's going to have to come across. That fulfills this one clue look. So we can do that, that. This one clue being fulfilled means we get a whole load more information over on this side. This now can't turn downwards, so it's going to have to turn upwards. Um, Okay, let's try and have a think about what this now has to turn upwards look, otherwise it's isolated. We've got one, two, three, so this is going to have to turn left or we're going to isolate the loop, so that has to do that. And what next? This must turn down, turn down, turn out, mustn't close the loop, turn down, mustn't close this loop. That must come in there. And we're starting to build a pattern look. We've got two loop segments in this row. We need three. If this comes this way, it's isolated. So it goes that way and that connects there. And then we get the top of the grid. Beautiful. And I like the fact this top of the grid looks like a castle to me. So um, uh, yeah, that's it. very, very appropriate in an awesome castle wall puzzle. Um, right, so where would we go? from here. Let's have a think. Um, so now it's a while since I did this puzzle so you're going to have to forgive me while I try and remember what the efficient way of doing this is. One, two, three, four here. But one loop segment there. We've got a third one's going to be taken up there. That's all good. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six here. Got nothing going on, I don't think, in this row yet. That's going to be hard to disambiguate. One, two, ah, this four column is probably the next place to look. Yes, because we've got two line segments drawn and we've got this one coming into this square. Now, if this continues, We've now got no way of making four line segments in the column. We could put one more in, but that's our, going to be our limit. So actually we know that this doesn't continue. This is going to have to branch. It's going to have to turn up or turn down. In doing that, it will give us a line segment, but rule out another line segment. So this line segment here is also forced. Um, so let's put that in and see if that sheds any light on what the puzzle how the puzzle needs to move from now. Um, right, now if we join that to that, we've got a big problem because we've got a stranded loop. I can join this end to one of these ends, but the other end will be stranded. So this cannot connect downwards there, which means that must come down. In order not to close the loop off, we need this to move this way. Um, Ah, and that's important, look, because this little loop segment here has a profound effect in this row. Because if this now turns upwards and comes here, it now can't close the loop, so it would have to go again. And that's one, two, three loop segments in this row. That does not work. So this cannot actually turn up. It needs to turn down. 
And now, ah yes, now look, we've got the same trick. We can perform exactly the same trick on this line segment. If it turns left, it's got to go up twice and that puts three in this column. I mean, how beautifully designed is this puzzle? It's just stunning, isn't it? It's stunning. Um, now we've got two light loop segments in this column. So this can't be crossed anymore. It must come in here. We can't close this loop. That must do that. That must do that. We've got our five line segments now in this row. So we can X in that one. This can't do anything. It's got to come up. That's got to come up. And there you go. And that's how to finish Ken's puzzle completely and utterly logically. And I hope you would agree with me. That was not not straightforward. It was beautiful, but far from straightforward. Now, do make sure you hang around to watch Takuma solve of that puzzle. Now, I'm going to pause the video now and go and load up the other one. OK, so here it is. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this puzzle as much as I did. I, I just thought this was so, so stunning. So let's start off by um, putting in the obvious ones. We've got to make sure the white cells are inside the loop so we can do a bit like that. The grey cells, remember, we don't know if they're in or out of the loop, so we can't do anything there. Um, we know that the white squares and the black squares have got to be divided because one is inside the loop, one's outside the loop. We can put some loop segments in here, look. Again, we must divide the black squares from the white squares. We mustn't divide the white squares from the white squares because they have to have the same parity. So we reach, I think we reach this point, do we? And now watch what happens next. I think the, the idea of the puzzle is to think about this three clue and this two clue here. So if this is a three and this is a two, this cell boundary here must be crossed. But just watch the effect of this. This one clue now. We know that this is coming up here and it's hitting the wall. So it's going to turn this way or this way. Well, that means that all of these cell boundary crossings are not going to be valid. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's start with this one, one, one clue here. It's no longer possible for anything to come up into that square, because if it does, it will have to go two, cross two cell boundaries. It must only cross one. So actually, we can X in these two here. This is a one clue as well. The same thing applies. This two clue... We've got a one clue there, actually, so that's another line segment I could have put in at the start. But that means we can't have three line segments in the column, so we get the same thing here. We've got a one clue here, so there's one of these as a line segment, so there's only one line segment here. That would be two. That's not going to work, so we can put those in. And look what's happened as a result of this. This two clue here is now fulfillable. This must be a line segment. Um, it's the only place the line segment can go in this stretch. And that means this one clue is suddenly interesting because this hits a boundary. It's going to turn. That's going to consume the clue. So we can put in some X's this way. Now this one clue again. This one clue again. And we get this pattern building up the grid. How cool is this? And now this two clue is forced. And now this one clue is forced. Now this one clue is forced. This one clue is forced. And this one line segment must be entered. And look at that. There's another one to help us out. So these can't be in. This can't be in. And finally, this one segment at the top can be placed in. So we get this beautiful sort of chain reaction coming from the bottom right to the top left of the grid which is just gorgeous um, now this three clue has suddenly become rather interesting because remember we can't have this black um, square inside the loop so actually those loop segments are ruled out so we've got one here whichever way this turns that's one line segment this boundary is going to give us another one so this has to be a line segment in order to allow this three clue to be fulfilled. And then it turns there. Now that finishes off this two clue now. So this must both, these must both be um, X's. And now, well, the fun doesn't stop. We can move over to this two clue. Now this two clue is definitely gonna have one 
line segment from here look so nothing can come through this gate because that's going to give us three line segments in the row so we can do this again and then we can also look at this square here this is hitting a boundary this x is a boundary where it will have to turn so this two clue also can't come through this gate so we can X this off. Now that isolates this square completely. It isolates this square completely. If this turns this way, we're going to close the loop. So that's not going to be a good idea. So this has got to come out into this space here. We don't yet know how this, this moves, but we're, we've learned quite a lot about how the loop is developing. We've also learned that this two clue, where's, where's the second of its line segments? There's one here in either of those two positions. If it comes through here, that's that's too many. Whenever you cross through there, that's two line segments. So the only other place it can get a single line segment from in the row is going to be this position. So this must be um, this must be a boundary if you like. Um, now let's continue to think about how these line segments might look. Um, let me think about the best way of describing it. This two clue now. We've got one line segment. We've got this hitting a boundary where it has to turn. So that line segment, this, all of these line segments are impossible. This is going to have to move up. And now this three clue at the bottom and this two clue here have a very interesting property because we've got, um, we need two line segments above above this clue. Now either of these line segments forces a second because of these X's. So if this line segment is in it's no longer possible to pick up one more line segment from this little run here. So in fact this is not a line segment and both of these are a line segment. How cool is this? I mean it's just the most gorgeous execution of a theme that you could possibly imagine. It's breathtaking. Now, this little junction here now has become restricted. If a line segment comes in here, it has to extend again. We've already got one line segment over this side, so that's going to be three altogether. So neither of those is going to work. We can X those off. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's have a look at the four clue here. One, two, three, four, five. There were five degrees of freedom for line segments up here, but this coming in here will have to turn. And in doing so, it will consume one of the degrees of freedom. So the other line segments are all forced. Uh, they're all forced. We don't yet know which way this is going to turn. Um, although we may be able to deduce it fairly soon, I think. Now let's take another stare at this and see where the easiest wins are going to are going to be from the logic. Um, I tell you what we could do. This is something I noticed as I was solving it. This eight clue. Let's have a think about how that might look. Um, it's got to, we've got two line segments drawn in, but you can see that as a, as the line develops along this column. Whenever it crosses one of these X's, it must take two line segments. So we have to be very careful about including odd numbers of line segments. Now, if this comes this way, this line segment is obviously of length one, but every other line segment you draw in this column has to be of an even number, has to be two line segments long. So if this did turn this way, this eight clue is never fulfilled because you cannot keep this, this line segments even altogether. So this must turn that way. This comes down, turns up here like that. Now we know this two clue is fulfilled already by this line segment and this line segment. So we can actually restrict that off. So we get a line segment of length four up here. Um, and this is also quite interesting because if we think about how this develops now, it's either going to come down to that way 
or it's going to go up to that way. So there's always a junction here which must take two more line segments. Now look at the three clue here. We've got this turning once and this this line of length two, so everything else along here cannot be a line. It's just mesmerizing this puzzle. Something this intricate in a grid this size. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I, it's just so cool. Now let's look at the five clue, and this works a bit with parity the way that the eight clue worked. We've got a line segment of length two, and we've got, but where these lines come into the, to the column, Whichever way they turn, they must always take two more line segments. So how are we ever going to get to five? There's only one way, and that's if this doesn't turn immediately. It must come up and then turn. That's going to be forced. And we know it's turning here, because when this turns, it's going to take two line segments. One, two. So we, we don't want more than five, so we have to stop. That has to close off there. This can't turn up now. Otherwise, there's going to be too many line segments in the column. So this comes on this way. Um, and now we're faced with another decision. So let me just stare at this for a moment and remember what I did uh, in order to make more progress. Yeah, if we look at this line segment here, if this turns in here, we close the loop. So that doesn't turn that way. That must turn that way like that. That completes, look, if we look along here, we've now got our two line segments, so that can't be another one. That's got to turn down. We get a little bit more progress along there like that. Uh, we know that this segment's going to be forced. Now, let me just take, try and remember what the most efficient way of doing this was. Maybe we need to have a look at this column here, actually, with this six clue. Is it possible this six clue doesn't use this long string that's forced in the center of it? One, two, three, that's of length four. So can we get to six without having this included? And I don't think we can even get close to it. We could have two that way, uh, one here, uh, we can get close to it, but we can't get there. Uh, and two here, that's only adding up to five. So actually, we know that this run here must be included. That gives us five in this column now, which means that this can't turn up. Otherwise, that's going to be too many. So that must come along one further. Um, now, whichever way this line segment now turns, it's going to take two that way or two that way. And with this turning as well, that gives us three turns. So we can X off another lot of possible turns. And that isolates this look and forces it upwards here. So this must also turn. Now, uh, let me just think about this for a second. We've got to be careful here. If this comes this way, yes, if this comes this way like that, this is isolated now. It can't get out. It would have to do that and there would be nowhere for it to go without closing the loop. So this must turn down, complete the five clue. This must turn left to complete the three clue in combination with this. And now look, now look, we get another sort of meta idea going on here. If, we, if you scan the outside of the grid, you can see we've almost got a complete loop. So if we join this to this like that, then however these join up at the top, there's going to be one loop on the outside and one loop on the inside, and that is not going to work. So actually, this has to come up here, this has to come up here. Now we've got four line segments now in this column, so that's enough. We must turn, turn like that. This must turn as well for the same reasons. That must come up here. Uh, one, two, three, four. That's enough there. So we must extend that, extend that, extend that that way. And that is the puzzle. 
Now, how cool is that? That is one of the great, great puzzles I've ever solved in my life. So, Vanilla Ice, thank you very much. I hope we get to find out through publishing this video exactly who you are. As I say, I will uh, sing your name from the rooftops. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I have to say, I really enjoyed making it. <laughs> so, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. 戦闘シーンだけどな。誰に期待をすればいいのかわからない。うーん。エクトプラズマが一番家庭に走りそうな印象があるけど、あんまりあんまりそういうこと言ってはいけないかもしれない。あれ。スピーマンのこれは若干期
。SP1 いいぞ。んなんか違うなんか左下、あ、なんか消した。今消したところちょっと違ったんですけど、治るかもしれないかな。うん。今こ、うん、また違うことをやってるけど、上半分合ってそうなんで、あそこにもう一回手をつけなければ、なんとかなってくれるかな。なんとかなってほしいんだけどな。はい。うん。まあね、あの、最初の初手で決まる変があるのは、やっぱり、仮定するにしても頼りになるので、めっちゃ大事っていう。どうかな。来るかな。いいぞいいぞいいぞ。上は違う。そうじゃない、そうじゃない。もう答えをと出し合わせて見てるけど、そうじゃない。<笑><笑>上はっていうのでしただけですね、うん、あそうそうそうそうなんですよもう多分家庭は最後の爪でもう家庭上等でやってると思いますけどお合ってる方に行ったあ来た来た来た来る来るお来て来てお願いします<笑>作者の心の叫び<笑>いや正解者ゼロはやばいんでやばいでしょチェックしちゃうやばいですよあチェックか頼むよってか合ってるんじゃないの合ってるよ合ってるよ早く出そうまだ時間は大丈夫だけど。出して出して。出しました。勝ったか自分が勝ったかのような。<笑>作者が救われています。救われております。どうかなどうかな他の人は相変わらずなので、彼だけが頼りというか。5分超えてるんでね。おこれは